I can't be the only one who has dreamed about a life of freedom. To go anywhere one wants to go. To not be shackled to a desk or a mortgage. Not worry about how much fuel costs. And today, I wake up in Falmouth, Maine. That's Portland off there in the distance. A beautiful anchorage with a gazillion boats in here. And uh, a gorgeous day. And a lot of things are going to happen that are going to be special today. One of them is that we get to add to our already pretty substantial solar array on the boat. When we talk about freedom, it makes us feel good when we go in our boat or our RV or whatever we're going. And we don't have to worry about how we're going to power things. We don't have to plug in at night. We don't have to run the generator. And uh, getting power is a, a kind of a big deal. And uh, obviously if you run your engine, you usually have an alternator that can charge batteries. And some of us are fortunate to have a generator if you need it. But uh, most of the places we want to go are usually sunny. So why not utilize the sun and have the sun kind of subsidize your freedom? Freedom from having to go and plug in and charge up. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is SV Paquita. Come along almost every week whenever I get a chance to post a video. And follow along as I try to make the transition from being a professional lifelong mariner to cruising a sailboat, mostly offshore, but sometimes in the coastal waters. Right now we're in New England and we're getting ready to go through the Cape Cod Canal and uh, head up towards Maine. Spend the rest of the season in the Gulf of Maine. Let's come along, strap in, and hope you like it. Nothing but quality. Got the stern lined up right in the sun so you guys can't see much. <laughs> anyway, those that have been following know that Paquita has a, about 990 watts of solar on board. And that in itself isn't that special. Uh, what does kind of make the system a little bit special is that each one of these panels, we've got a 200, a 430, a 200, and then 160, actually I think it's 165 watt old panel left over from the previous owner over here. But what makes these special is that each one has a its own charge controller. As you can see, we've got the boom off to the side so that it minimizes the shading. When, uh, you know, if you have them all, if, if you used one charge controller for everything, you would need, ideally you'd have all the panels be the same panel and if one got shaded it would reduce all of them would reduce to the lowest common denominator so that's why I have multiple uh, charge controllers but there's something that has um, was all the rage a while ago and I was a little hesitant about it and those are thin film flexible solar panels usually solar panels come in rigid like these or thin film uh, flexible ones and so a number of years ago I want to say like three or four years ago a lot of people in the sailing community went out and got flexible ones and put them directly on top of their Dodger and their Bimini and uh, I think they did that hoping that it would work well and it was an easy solution at the time and I think a lot of them failed um, they didn't just fail power output wise but they had a lot of delamination problems where the the plastic would would start uh, coming up on the edges uh, they also had a lot of problems with output especially in low light but all of that has changed allegedly so I get contacted by a bunch of different people wanting me to uh, kind of partner with them and promote their products on my different channels and um, I would say about 
I was gonna say nine out of ten, but it's more like 99 out of a hundred. I usually say it's not a good fit, it's not what I want, and it doesn't do it. But the good people over at at Bouge RV. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> anyway, uh I'm if you guys know I speak Spanish, I don't speak French. <laughs> anyway, they contacted me and they have this whole it's it's uh, from what I understand the research I've I've done it's a whole new process of thin thin film flexible solar panels so much so that you can roll it up in 360 degrees the whole thing came in this box right here and this is a hundred watt solar panel look at this thing it's amazing it's beautiful when I look at the quality this is not from what I've seen of other flexible solar panels this is completely different as far as the build quality goes you got some mc4 connectors here um they also have some things on here they put they put their stamp right on here of uh stc conditions you know standard test control uh and oh that's usually a good thing when you see a company that doesn't put this right out in the open that's usually because they're lying about it so i get a feeling these guys are going to come true with everything they're saying so that's a really good sign but as you can see the build quality is incredible and it comes all rolled up now having a 360 degree uh surface is not something that most people would want in the solar application but i think these are originally built for the rv world and you think about like a camper that has a rolled edge kind of like an airstream or something like this this is amazing because not only does it does it conform to it but it already comes with adhesive already on the back that you just peel and stick and you could put this you could put everything right on the curvature of the rv and it would stick right in there and that that's that's phenomenal that that's amazing so i'm all excited about it and i think that what i'm going to do with this one is i'm going to put it on top up here on the bimini from one side to the other now what makes this interesting they assure me that this thing has it, it outperforms things in low light conditions and that's a big deal especially because of where i'm going to put it on the bimini um, it'll have more shading from the mast and the boom so that's an issue and as the sides roll over on the edges that'll be interesting to see how that works the big test for me is not going to happen today it's going to happen six months out from now to see if there is any of the delamination issues like uh the other panels have have had i doubt it but stick around for that and i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll report back to you but i got a feeling this is a it's everything they're saying it is at least i hope so so come along as i uh put these on and what i'm going to do just to let give you guys a heads up is the solar it, it, they, they sent me a panel which is great i thank you that thank thank them very much for that uh they didn't send me a charge controller and i told you i have four charge controllers for the other things well the 165 watt panel that's over here i think what i'm going to do is because i have the connections open um i'll disconnect that and connect this one into that uh panel uh, into that charge controller and then what we'll do is we'll do a test where the sun you know we'll have the angle the same angle we'll have the same sun on the same day and see how much power we can capture from both the flat panel and the the flexible one now you're going to say well the flexible one's 100 watt and the other one's 165 watt we're not going to do it straight with wattage we'll do it with percentage of output if you have a, a 100 or 200 watt panel and you think you're going to get 100 or 200 watts out um that's very rare that that happens it usually happens much less than that so it's going to be a percentage of what the panel do so it should be a relatively close it'll be the same charge controller and the same day and the same sun the same angle so i i, I think that's going to be interesting data to to see so wish me luck so the first thing we have to do is to take off this piece that's called the connector piece and this is something that we usually do when it's hot out and believe me it's really hot right now we went shopping and uh came back and i had the it was uh raining before so i had the whole enclosure down except the back end so it's really really sticky in here so in order to do this i just need to take off these side curtains and take a second and then we'll take off that connector piece and then we'll have much better uh access to see how the panels are going to fit This connector piece 
is really nice to have when the weather sucks but unfortunately it doesn't allow for us to see a lot of sail trim so that kind of sucks there is part of my uh, bimini that has a window right above the right above the helm and you can open up a flap and look up the sails the only problem is that since i have some solar there all you see is the back of the solar panel so when you're at least for in a mono hull like this if you uh want a lot of solar there's some things you're gonna have to give up and in this case one of the things i have to give up is a good view of the uh of the sail trim. So the first thing we have to worry about is that if this thing is too long, it's really not going to work very well. So I am going to not really strip it down too much other than some of the packing paper. And maybe both sides. I don't want this stuff to go in the water. Plastic in the ocean would not make for a very good mariner. Cross our fingers. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Let me get up here and have a look. Oh, that's gonna work great. Oh yeah. Now, in case you thought you didn't weren't gonna see, let me bring this around so you guys can see this too. So as you can see, we have the top of this. I waited until this afternoon so to make sure that all the dew was off of it. Um, the only thing we have left is some bird poop over there. And any dodger without bird poop is probably a dodger that uh, hasn't been out in the water too much. <laughs> now to be quite fair and honest, I have to say that I'm not really excited about getting this butyl. It looks like they have some sort of mastic or butyl and putting it right to my beautiful sombrella. I'm a little concerned about that, but I also have a lot of faith. This company is supposed to be really, really good. So if this sticks and it works, then it won't be an issue. But if it comes off, there's gonna be this be awful butyl and nastiness in there. Now I should also say that I think that if I had put waterproofing on the sombrella this year already i would probably try to take some of that off before i put the adhesive you know put peeled off the adhesive and put this down but uh in the meantime i think i'm just going to go and because i didn't put any of that you know i didn't put any waterproofing on it's been two years now i think this is pretty much straight sombrella so i think it will adhere to that but now that I'm looking at it, and it looks beautiful right here. Once again, like I say, the build quality in this is so, I'm really, really impressed. Hopefully I'll be this impressed a year or two, or maybe even five years from now. But anyway, I say before we even stick this, let's look at some numbers. And what I mean by some numbers is look, we're gonna hook this up and see what happens. Now right here, we've got the boom shading this right here. So that's a low light scenario. But I'm going to actually pull the boom over so that this won't be an issue when we do our test. All right, that's where we're at. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you see this right here, you can see where there's these two MC4 connectors have been screwed in over here. And this was from the former uh, previous owner. I think some people going by. Morning. <laughs> so uh, my plan is to disconnect from there and connect these other ones into there and we'll be able to read the meter at the same time. I'm also going to flatten this panel out. So give me a second and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I got some spare wire and wired up some MC4 connectors. I had some spares of those too. When you do a solar project, you usually buy bulk, so I had some extra things. But anyway, I've got white and red. So we're going to have red be positive and white be negative. And we're going to plug into the panel before we do anything to make sure that I got my polarity right before I do anything really stupid. So here we go. Here's the positive. We're going to put it into red. Negative. Uh, 
Okay. And I get my multimeter. Let's bring this down here. Let's see what it says. And we put it on voltage. Defaults to AC. I put it on DC voltage. Of course, they're all tangled up here. For those that don't know, uh, anything under 50 volts is usually fine to touch with your fingers. Anything above 50 volts is usually going to let you know about it. A little tingle and maybe even worse. But right now, I put this on and we are showing 27.7 volts coming out of the panel right now. So you say, wait a minute, you have a 12 volt battery charger. Uh, you have a 12 volt battery bank. You are absolutely correct. So what you usually want to do is you want a higher voltage and then have a voltage regulator, uh, MPPT, a multi-point power, is it maxi, maximum point or multi-point? I don't know if it's maxi or multi, but MPPT is, uh, the new version of voltage regulators as opposed to the old one which was PWM pulse width modulation which would kind of like pop and kind of, it was a dumb regulator and it wasn't very efficient these new ones are much better at getting higher voltages and be even at lower amperage uh, be able to continue to charge things so that's great so now what I want to do is uh, now that we've got this set, I'm going to keep these apart because we are live, but like I say, they're not going to really, uh, do anything to other than, uh, you know, you're not going to get electrocuted if you step on them, but I need to get the panel over here and make that look just like the panel up above, meaning at the same angle of the dangle so that we can be in the same ballpark. <laughs> okay. So... This looks really bad. It says 2.2 is. But if you notice, what's happening here is we've gone into float. So my bad house bank is already fully charged. So in that small time, it just switched back and forth. So hang on a second. Let me use, put some loads on the battery and we'll try this again. Okay, I've got an update for you. It's like 90 degrees here in Maine, oddly enough in august hardly any breeze and i'm underneath the the behind the dodger here so i am sweating like who knows what but uh that's not what's important what's important is i originally hooked everything up just like you were seeing and in typical tim fashion things don't always go the way i wanted what happened was that because it's a sunny day and because my charger the charge controller that i was using is a dumb charger it i shouldn't say it's a dumb charger it went into float in other words it said the battery voltage is up we don't have to charge anymore and it reduces the amperage going in so <laughs> that means we have to go to one of my new uh ones which i have the three uh victron controllers so with one of the 200 amp uh 200 watt panels the one that's still facing the sun probably even a better angle than the flexible panel has we're gonna pop in there so what i've been doing is putting new mc4 connectors on the ends of the testing cables and i'm gonna pop off the mc4 cables off uh, mc4 connectors off of the 200 watt one and pop these on and see the difference so let's start again so the boat has moved a little bit i've moved the boom over once again i say that there's a little bit of an unfair advantage for the for the 200 watt panel because that's at a really good angle that's almost perfect angle for the sun where the other one is in a good angle the 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 bouge rv panel is at a good angle but it's probably not quite as perfect anyway so right now if you look the 200 watt panel is putting out 124 watts and if you say why isn't it putting out 200 well you probably don't know that much about solar that's kind of the way things work so now we're going to switch and go over and to the 100 watt panel so if we get half as much we're doing really good so let's see what happens so now i'm just going to come over here and disconnect each one of these and plug them into the other panel
and then we give it a little bit of time to sink up and here it's coming up now and you can see it's starting to go 30 40 50 60 75 uh, 67 rather so uh, oh, you know what we're getting a little bit of clouds but 60 65 66 67 so that's actually better that's a little bit better than the other ones so in fact it is uh performing even though it's all the way on the curve and it's doing that it's uh it is performing as ex uh, not even as well better than the perfectly positioned rigid panel and uh so i call that a resounding success i'm real happy with that i think right now all i have to do now is to uh i think what i'm going to do is order a new uh charge controller and permanently mount this one with the uh you know pull pull the uh the mastic uh release on it and put the tape on or the tape's already on there but stick it down and uh i'm really liking this i think it's going to be great uh I'll have more numbers as the sun goes down, but I got a feeling that as the sun goes down, things are going to look even better because this is supposed to work much better in low light conditions. So all in all, I call that a resounding success. Uh, really happy with the build quality. The people are great. Let me just show you something that you don't find too often with a lot of technology. Right on the box that they sent it, they have the service email address here, a phone number, the, the web page and even a WhatsApp number. And if you guys don't know what WhatsApp is, I tell you, it's kind of like the metric system. It's something that's awesome that everybody in the, u in the world uses except us here in the States. So anyway, it's a way of getting in touch with them. Um, I want a big thank you to uh, Bouge RV. Um, this has been a real fun project. Uh, I've been tearing my hair out for trying to get everything to work but uh meaning not, not not on their end but because my batteries were topped up and had to switch over controllers and that sort of stuff but i'm really happy i think it's going to be i think it's a perfect spot for it and uh it kind of makes me wonder they have a 200 watt version of the same thing and i think it's just twice as wide and i'm almost wondering if a 200 watt would fit here but if you guys are interested in this i'll put a link in the description below and they're offering they're they're launching their they're doing a big launch right now and they're offering a special discount to you guys so uh look in the description and you'll figure out how to do all this stuff you guys thank you so much for watching as always i'll see you on the one